which he has consecrated for us through the veil. We're through that veil now. That is to say, his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let's hold fast to the profession of our faith with, without wavering, for he's faithful that promised. And let's consider one another and provoke each other to good works. Let's not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but let's exhort one another. And so much more as we see the day, of, uh, the day approaching. Just because our sacri- the sin is gone because of one sacrifice, let's still try. Let's still exhort one another. Let's still show up for the assembling of ourselves together. Let's still let God work us into the body so that we can be used to bless others and others can be used to bless us. Let's still try. Let's not just quit because one sacrifice paid for the sins. Let's still do some things that are on the right side of, you you get that. Now look at verse 26. I've had this thrown up to me so often. For if we sin willfully after that we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. I had a preacher recently say, right there, brother, if you have sinned willfully one time after you said the sinner's prayer and Jesus came into your heart, one time after that, it was not forgiven and you'll answer for it. I waited through the ignorance that had filled the room when his mouth opened. Looked him in the eye and said, then you are going to the hell that you're telling me about because you have sinned since you got saved. He said, not to my knowledge. I said, arrogance is a sin. You just, you just got that one down. Pride is a sin. You walking in it today. Don't be stupid. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin because there doesn't need to be another sacrifice for sin. If you sin willfully, Jesus does not have to climb back up on the cross and die again. He is already the one sacrifice that paid for sins. Do you see that? It's more, it's even plainer in the Greek, but it's pretty plain in English. We just read the whole passage that verse 18 says, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sins. That's verse 18. So there's no more, if you sin willfully, there's no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Who are your adversaries? Your thoughts, your weaknesses, your flesh, God's fire. Yes, there is a fire. Yes, you will get burned. Every man's work will be tried by fire. First Corinthians says so. The wood, the hay, and the stubble will burn up. It probably will be painful. I know it is for me. Every time the fire comes, it's cyclic. I walk through hell every day. Yes, there is a fire. Yes, it's from God. Yes, he punishes. Yes, there's a father in heaven who cares if I sin. Yes, I believe there's a consequence for sin. The enemies of the gospel of grace are on the attack. This week, I heard people that used to love this ministry say that I preached there was no consequence to sin. That is BS, and I'll say it to their face if they'd like to call me up and ask me about it. Go get my CDs. I have preached every single week, week after week after week after a week that there is a consequence to sin no it is not cooking on the eternal grill where the mean god who can't forgive his enemies but requires us to forgive ours is going to cook you forever and never let you get done but yes there are consequences for sin and it has never come out of my mouth any other way than that there are lots of consequences to your sin in this earth on in this life if it's written in your heart to do something and you don't do it it is sin to you I can't dictate to you what is and what is not sin. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God is writing it on your heart, but something's written on your heart. I promise you there is writing on your heart. God's dealing with you. And there are things that are wrong to you. And there are things that are right to you because God, God is God. He's our Father, and He's instilling those things within us. And when you break that code, not the moral law that God gave Moses for the Jewish nation, but when you trespass and break the law that God has written in your heart, yes, it is sin. No, it does not send you falling off the cliff into the lake of fire to burn forever, but yes, it will bring you up to the fire of God who is the all-consuming fire. Yes, it will cause you to experience fiery indignation, uh, fear, uh, judgment. Yes, God judges us on a daily basis. The judgment of the world is complete. But as individuals, yes, we stand before God. God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, you can't tell me what is sin and what is not for my life. And I can't for your life. 
But you and your heart know when you're trespassing. Only you know, but you know. And yes, there's a price to pay for it. I would like to go on record saying that I believe there's a consequence for sin. I just do not believe it's eternal torment. Give me a break.